Welcome back to the Living on PureCast podcast. I'm Dr. Gavick, Director of Medical Education, and I'm very honored to have with me today Dr. Rafael Gonzalez. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Dr. Gonzalez, you're very well known in the regenerative medicine field and stem cells and exosomes and, and pretty much everything in the cellular world. Give us a little idea about your background. Sure, absolutely. So I was fortunate to work at the University of California, Irvine, where originally I'm actually from the spinal cord injury sector. I started off doing actually immune interactions with the spot with spinal cord. And by default, I actually ended up in the stem cell world by being part of the team that was the first embryonic stem cell research done on spinal cord injury. And they were later gone into clinical studies with Geron Corporation um, that later ended up actually dissolving, not coming to fruition. And then from there, I just went full steam ahead. This was back from starting in 2000, full steam ahead actually into the stem cell sector, all of it, you know, anything you can think of, adult stem cells, almost any type of cell you can think of. So you're pushing 20 years in the stem cell field, which is like a lifetime for this industry. I'm, it's coming up to that. And with all the different cells that I've worked at, it feels like a lifetime. <laughs> so what we want to talk about today is exosomes, big buzzword in the industry, right? Yes. Exosomes this, exosomes that. What does that really mean? I mean, what are exosomes? The, the interesting thing about an exosome is that an exosome basically is, just, I would just consider just like a mini cell. But it's a mini cell that doesn't have all the functions of a cell. And it has a wall around it. And it's an information packet. It's a method of a cell to communicate with another cell, or believe it or not, a cell to communicate actually with itself. This thing is actually one one thousandth of the size of an actual cell. So I see them termed as like a micro vesicle correct. full of this non transcribing micro RNA that wants to talk to everything around it. Correct. Yeah. So so it's it's a method of a protection method basically for the cell before it's actually an exosome. It's inside of a cell. It's called an endosome. The cell makes this and manufactures this and then this stuff is actually excreted out and if the same cell needs it again it'll take it back in or if that cell wants to communicate which is the vast majority of times with another cell to make a change or to do something then it actually just transferred it over and it's a protective mechanism this way nothing's degraded nothing is you know changed in it with that exact message inside of it so we know pretty much what they are um kind of what they're composed of. Can you go into that a little bit? I mean, we know there's some microRNA, but but what's kind of the, what's there, the working stuff? Yeah, so there, there, there are microRNAs in there which can make uh, changes. And then there are also proteins in there. Um, there's various different, just sort of, the, just think of information, whatever a cell needs, and if it's neighbor, because remember, cells communicate together. Right. And, and they give each other this information, and they feed off of each other, and they say, hey, partner, I need this. Can you make me this? And then this other guy will actually perform, make this, manufacture it, and packet it, and then spew it out of a cell, secrete it out, and then it actually goes to, its, let's say, its neighbor or somewhere else. It, could actually, actually tra it can go far away also. So are there specific types of cells that create exosomes or do all cells create exosomes? Virtually every single cell in the body can, uh, uh, pr pr basically produces exosomes. So it creates the, the package inside the cell when it's called an endosome. Yep. And when it's secreted out, excreted out, it becomes an exosome. Correct. It's, an, it's then an exosome at that time. So it's, it's a little different at that point. So, I mean, we, this, this big buzz in the industry, like, oh, exosome this, exosome that. I, I have two billion exosomes in my product. What, what are they supposed to do? They're, the concept is basically to make a change. And in this type of industry, regenerative medicine, we're talking about making a change for the better, um, you know, to repair something, to heal something, to make functional changes in the body. Uh, there's there's quite a bit of preclinical work that's out there that has actually shown that these these things these exosomes uh, serve really well more than anything else is believe it or not in the neurological sector um, can increase blood flow to the brain can ha help heal specific neurological disorders in animal models uh, in wound care uh, can actually you know help heal wounds 
And this is based on, for instance, in specific miRNAs that are actually in these packets that can actually make changes. But what's out there right now is is a little bit of a, for me personally, I think it's it's a, it's a misnomer because it's not, um, everybody discusses exosomes and pure exosomes. Right. But I don't think very similar to the stem cell sector that's what, what's out there right now when a bone marrow is small fraction of stem cells, very small fraction. Right. And umbilical cord blood is a small fraction of stem cells, stromal vascular fraction, small fraction. It's really, really similar. What I'm seeing out there is that these products are not pure exosome-based product. To actually do that, you have to do what's called an ultracentrifugation. You have to do a specific isolation of just the exosome. These products are more, they contain exosomes, but the problem is people are calling them exosome. You know, exosome might be a fraction of what's actually in the product. So it sounds like you're pretty comfortable with the exosome field. How long have you been working with exosomes? I, I've been working in this field uh, for about five years, and those of us that have been working for a while on this, we actually just call this supernatant or the, the byproduct of media. It's actually recycled product of cells, of food. And, you know, these exosomes, you can obtain them from any cell type, for instance, you, from cancer cells. Cancer cells excrete out these exosomes that actually cause more cancerous cells to grow. So depending on the condition that you put these in is what they are going to do. So how, how, do you, how do you make the exosomes? I mean, we know how the body does it, but when you make a, you're making a product to, to sell as a regenerative product, how do you make that? So we basically, in, in, for instance, in, in, in the product that we've been working with for years, and we've done some outside independent studies on everything, we basically take a pure umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cell. This is a culture expanded culture uh, system, you know, basically in a Petri dish, or we call them actually cell stack systems. And we put the cells to grow in the optimal formulations. We've run various different formulations to see which one is the best. And then at certain points, once these things are happy as happy can be, they have their tight junctions and their cell-cell contact with each one, we then at that point change the condition completely drastically. We put them into somewhat of a starvation mode. It depends on what we want them to secrete. We have various different methods to make them secrete different things. Mm -hmm. So what transpires, though, is everybody's focused on the exosome. The exosome is, is secreted out. But besides exosomes, there's other things that are secreted by cells. Right. You know, proteins, extracellular matrix in abundance because cells do not survive without extracellular matrix. We talked about collagen before. We've talked about Correct. hyaluronic acid, the most abundant, you know, proteins in your body. So these things are also secreted. And for instance, the product that we have, it, it has these things in there and it's, these things are needed for protein survival. These things are needed for the transport of these vessels from one location to another location. So, I mean, what they're talking about is using this in regenerative medicine. So you're building this in an artificial environment, a perfect environment, yes. until you know that they get all perfectly together. Then you put them under stress so that you create this. Yes. And then you take the, the, that exosomal product and then put it into the body. Does it act the same way? I mean, as, as in that, that perfect environment that you're dealing with? So remember, the body is under, depending on what's transpiring in the condition, you can coerce the cell to, to, to secrete out whatever you need. Um, if you put it just a straight stem cell, you know, a pure stem cell in a condition that all of a sudden you starve it, it's going to go into survival mode. And right. survival mode is actually going to require that it secretes out specific survival cues, whether they're proteins, whether they're extracellular matrix, whatever is needed to survive. When you put that into a body, for instance, you're basically putting possibly something in, and this is hypothetically speaking, because right. we don't really know. Clinical studies have not been done on this. We don't really know. Um, you put it into a condition that possibly, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. But the concept is, is that you're putting something in to activate your own system, because that's what this stuff is spitting out. Right. Activate your own system to heal and to repair. Whether it does that, it's still to be known. We don't know. That's probably why you are working on developing a product. Correct. To see if we can bring to line, you know, bring online at Livion. But it requires some, some studies, more studies to figure out exactly what it's doing. It's in, a, it's in some immature stages, but you're getting there very rapidly. Yes, we, we've done a lot of studies on there. So I mean, we're going on five, six years of, of studies uh, with this already to identify various different methods of production. 
uh, production in a GMP manner. Um, how do you make sure most importantly is you have a consistent product that it's consistently has the same exact thing because one day or another, even though you grow up a cell in a specific condition, it's hard to dictate, you know, um, you know, you got the same exact day, you got to do collections of the media and then also the reagents that you're using, everything has to be according to GMP, um, testing the actual products, testing large batches of it. it it's not, it's not easy. And that's why we've spent a lot of time and effort in, in research and development and going, you know, the correct route, what we want to do. Well, I think we've hit what we really wanted to talk about today. You know, where they come from, what are they, what do they do, what do they have the potential to do? If you'd be willing to, I'd like to bring you back at some other time and really talk about the research that you're doing, what you're looking for, what, what you're really looking for to do in the body, and maybe when we can have an idea, when we can see some of this stuff in the marketplace, other than what we already see, but see your product uh, coming out in the marketplace. We'd really like that. Yeah, that, that would be great, and that would be uh, amazing to discuss. Uh, just real quick, real quick touches that remember that these things come from cells. Yes. And cells have to be spewing this out on a consistent basis. And people don't quite understand that. They have such a big buzz for exosomes. Yes. And they're discarding that the exosome is what's actually doing the work. The, the exosome is not the exosome without the cell. And you know that and I know that. Because this is what produces it. Right. That's why cell therapy is a much higher caliber. That's why live cells work. That's why live right. cells work. Yep. Hey, another great episode of the Livion Purecast. Please join us next time when we will again be with Dr. Rafael Gonzalez. I'm Dr. Gavick, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.